Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, you know, you know on this show, our promise to you is that we talk about only the top stories. These are the stories that everyone's talking about, which is why I must report this evening that our country has been hit with a new meme. <laughs> it appears to be a promotional image for the new movie starring Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh. The movie's called We Live in Time, a heart-wrenching saga about a marriage surviving through life's many ups and, oh my God, what is wrong with that horse? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna say what we're all thinking. That pony is tripping balls on ketamine. <laughs> Now, we don't, do we know what's going on? We don't know. This, but with the, this image is out there. We don't know what's going on with the image. The internet's been having a great time with it today, moving the horse around, <laughs> putting the horse into other movies. But here's the thing. I want to be fair to the people, whoever created this over at, uh, at, uh, at uh, New Line, A24, A24, whoever did that, I work in a visual medium. I know how carefully graphics are chosen to create an overall aesthetic. Hey, <laughs> Oh, hi, horse. Can I, Horace, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Can I ask you a personal question? Uh-huh. Why do you look like that? The things I've seen. The things I've seen. What, what have you seen? Everything, Steve. They took my eyelids. <laughs> and the only song I ever hear is <laughs> okay, get out, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, horsey. Okay, Steve, see, we live in time with Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield coming this October. Clip, clap, clip, clap, clip, clap, <laughs> clip, clap. <laughs> Troubled horse, everyone. <laughs> Troubled horse. Having trouble hearing the horse. Okay, turning to politics, this election is uh, getting exciting. According to a new poll, Harris narrowly leads Trump in nearly all the battleground states. And there you go. There you go. What is it? Nothing? Okay. And one of the reasons she's doing well is her new running mate. According to 538, Tim Walls has a net favorability rating of plus five. While, while J.D. Vance is at negative 9.4. Apparently, I think what we get from this is apparently people want coach, not couch. Oh, not a, oh, not oh, a true story. Oh. And no one seems to care. Um, Walls was, he was in California yesterday. He was in California yesterday addressing the government workers union. Listen to how he compared Harris's upbringing to Donald Trump's. Vice President Harris grew up in a middle class family, picked up shifts at that McDonald's as a student. I keep asking this to make a contrast here. Can you simply picture Donald Trump working at a McDonald's trying to make a McFlurry or something? Okay, here you go. You ordered a McFlurry? Okay. There you go. Uh-oh, I accidentally put it in my mouth, not the cup. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I got your nuggets right here. Hold on, there you go. Oops. In my mouth, not the bag. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tell you what, could you please order a Diet Coke because I'm getting mighty thirsty over here. <laughs> There's still fallout from the ex-president's disastrous interview with Elon Musk on Monday night. For instance, uh, this part where Trump says he had a conversation with Vladimir Putin about invading Ukraine. I said to Vladimir Putin, I said, don't do it. You can't do it, Vladimir. You do it, it's going to be a bad day. You cannot do it. And I told him things that what I do, and he said, no way. And I said, way. <laughs> And then I said, and then I said, swing, and he said, and then he said, excuse me, and I said, we're not worthy, and he said, party time, excellent. <laughs> Trump's campaign, he's got a little way of speaking there. You could hear that slur in that list, but Trump's campaign is in denial about how bad the interview sounded. When asked about why the president sounded weird, his team responded with, must be your Hearing, get your ears checked out. Even for the Trump campaign, that's an unusually hostile response. Uh, excuse me, uh, could you explain the outline of the president's job program? Oh, you want to hear about jobs? I had a job for your mom last night. <laughs> now, 
We've heard that kind of language from a lot of Trumpers, especially Trump spokesman and live action Mucinex man, Stephen Chung. <laughs> now, Chung, Chung became especially enraged recently after the Harris campaign tweeted out this statement. Trump's entire campaign is in service of people like Elon Musk and himself, self-obsessed rich guys who will sell out the middle class and who cannot run a live stream in the year 2024. Okay, Chung took offense at that, but not for the reason you think, tweeting, all these statements, yet no one ever puts their name on them. <laughs> cowards. That is a press secretary apparently unfamiliar with the concept of press release. And now, and now Pringles released a statement saying, once I pop, I am not going to be able to stop, but they don't put anyone's name on it. Does Mr. Pringles even exist, or is he AI too? Hey, Pringle, meet me in the alley after work, you high-sodium cuck. <laughs> now, as I said, Trump's running mate is also just dragging the ticket down. J.D. Vance is so unpopular, even Trump apparently doesn't like him. Reportedly, when Trump was asked at a fundraiser about walls labeling the Republican ticket weird, Trump replied, not about me, they're saying that about J.D. Uh, nice. <laughs> That's nice. Nice teamwork. <laughs> nice teammate. That reminds me of the end of Thelma and Louise. Now, on the other hand, Vance is completely loyal to Trump. Here he is on This Week uh, with George Stephanopoulos making excuses for Trump having dined with Nick Fuentes, a Nazi-loving white supremacist down in Mar-a-Lago, who has criticized Vance's own interracial marriage. The one thing I like about Donald Trump, John, is that he actually will talk to anybody, but just because you talk to somebody doesn't mean you endorse their views. And look, I mean, Donald Trump spent a lot of quality time with my wife. Uh, every time he sees her, he gives her a hug, tells her she's beautiful, and jokes around with her a little bit. I I'm not at all worried about Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> maybe you should be. <laughs> he, uh, he hugs my wife, says she's so beautiful, and... They're taking a salsa dancing class together. Just yesterday, he said to me, hey, J.D., why don't you go buy me and your wife some chicken wings and take your time? No rush coming back. <laughs> Vance is also on cleanup duty for Trump's outrageous comment that Kamala Harris all of a sudden became black. Here's how he tried to defend it on CNN. I believe that Kamala Harris is whatever she says she is, but I believe, importantly, that President Trump is right, that she is a chameleon. She pretends to be one thing in front of one audience. She pretends to be something different in front of another audience. Whereas, no matter who the audience is, J.D. Vance is always a sweaty weirdo who it's easy to believe boned a lazy boy. <laughs> Again, no truth to that. No truth. Easy to believe. Now, Vance is facing controversy involving a company he helped run because a damning report links J.D. Vance to horrific work conditions. Those conditions? Working with J.D. Vance. <laughs> the company was a startup that promised high-tech future for farming called App Harvest. It's the second most popular farming app next to Only Lambs. <laughs> you know their slogan, you've been a bad boy. Despite some parts of the world, New Zealand, very popular in New Zealand. Despite abusing their workers, App Harvest ended up hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. Oh, you've learned so much, young Padawan. You're like a son to me. TJ, is it TJ? No, don't tell me, I'll get it. JD, Power and Associates. Not everyone is a big fan of the way Trump is running his campaign. Take former Trump critic, turn Trump ally, turn Trump critic, turn Trump ally, turn Trump critic, Nikki Haley. Last night, <laughs> Haley made her case on the Fox News. I want this campaign to win. But the campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not, you can't win on those things. Yes, racist, sexist attacks calling her dumb is not the way to beat Kamala Harris. It's the way he beat Nikki Haley, you bird brain. That's not nice. 
That's that's what he called Haley Bird Brain. Really? Then why would she endorse him? Get out! <laughs> After a lot of will they or won't they, Trump and Harris have agreed to debate on September 10th, which posed a little scheduling conflict for my corporate overlords at Viacom, CBS, Paramount, Pep Boys, Auto Parts. So. <laughs> This week, they announced that MTV's Video Music Awards be rescheduled to avoid conflict with presidential debates. Also, they needed to reschedule so the second gentleman could join Slim Shady for a special VMA performance of Eminem Hoff. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are MSNBC's Alex Wagner and comedian Ali Mikofsky. And when we come back, 